Hey everyone, welcome to Principal Repo. This is Jad. And today we're going to be starting a new video series for beginners. Yeah, for beginners. So this video series will be for someone who has just discovered Principal for the first time and want to learn. This will be a great um, video series for you to check out. And also maybe if you have tried Principal in the past, but you were frustrated with it and you didn't really know what to do, and now you're looking into trying it out again, I suggest that you learn the basics by watching this video so that you can really get a grasp on it and learn how to use it. Yeah, so let's get started. Open a principal. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a short overview of the interface just so you can get familiar with everything. So if you've ever used Sketch before, very similar. You have the canvas here and then this is artboard. Then you have the layers panel. You have the um, inspector panel or the properties panel here. And here is something new is you have a preview window. So everything you do inside your artboards will be reflected real time in your preview window. Um, and let's try that out. Let's create a rectangle. Notice I created this rectangle and it was automatically added to the preview window. And now let's drag this to the middle. And boom, it gets added to the middle of the preview window as well. And that is going to be very cool and very helpful when you are creating your animations and your prototype. Um, and here we have the toolbar, very similar to Sketch as well. Um, but some of the things here are different, um, such as, you know, you probably don't know what drivers are in Animate is, like if you've never used it before. Then here we have new artboard, and you have text and rectangle. And these work uh, the same as Sketch, so with a rectangle, if, if I want to create a new rectangle, Instead of coming up here and pressing it, I can just press uh, R and it will pop up a new rectangle for me. Same thing if I want to make a new text layer, press T, it will pop up as well. And if we want to create a new artboard, just press A and it will show up as well. So yeah, learn keyboard shortcuts, by the way, that's the fastest way to work is if you know the shortcuts, you can get work done a lot faster. Um, and here, you know, it's typical stuff here. Uh, the only thing I will bring up here is a couple things. Number one, here you have under view, you see that there's a picture in picture and side by side. So what that does is if you choose side by side is it will take your preview window and make it independent of your uh, principal window. So now, you know, if you want more room on your principal window, you can just drag this over like this. And then if you're ready to preview it, you can click here and preview. Um, and then if you want to put this back, you just go to window or view and you click uh, picture in picture and it will put it back in. And the other thing that I want you to see is here we have a file um, and there's this thing called export viewer. Um, this is actually very helpful if you want to send your prototype to somebody else. Um, so let's try that export viewer. Notice that Principal created this file for me on my desktop called untitled.app and what you can do is you can send email this over to someone and have them check out your prototype. So let's double click to open it up. Notice this is our prototype, obviously there's nothing here yet. But this is actually really helpful if you want to share prototypes with others. The only thing is it doesn't work on a PC, only on a Mac. So PC users, you're out of luck, I'm sorry about that. But let's get started. The first. Um, thing that you'll be creating today is a button so let's let's turn this into a button actually let's make our artboard size a little bit um, smaller let's make that a little bit smaller here just for this exercise and let's center the button here what we want to do now is we want to make this into an actual nice looking button so let's edit that a little bit and the way I'm doing that is I'm holding alt to like drag both sides of it so you hold alt down and you'll be able to do that and another pro tip make sure that you keep everything aligned um, and centered it always looks better that way um, and let's add a border radius to this probably about 10 pixels is good um, and also guys the numbers here the values are all draggable so I can to drag the numbers here same with opacity I can change the angle and yeah that's that's very helpful to just drag values to play around with it but 
let's go back and add a radius to this 10 pixels and let's change the fill color to a blue color I want to have a blue button blue is a nice color right like blue is probably my favorite color but let's see and now we want to add a text layer so let's let's not we'll try not to use these we're gonna try to use our keyboard shortcuts okay so I'm gonna zoom in here let's press T so let's change the text to click here and let's drag it here and make sure it's centered and let's change alignment to center here um, and uh, let's see well let's just keep it a Helvetica for now and let's change the fill color of our text to white let's actually shrink the button down a little bit to right about there that's good so now we have a nice button here but we want to add a little bit of depth to this button so let's duplicate this layer um, the button layer by going to edit duplicate or you can just press command D for a keyboard shortcut there and let's take that bottom layer change the fill color to a darker blue and then let's drag that down maybe a few pixels one two three four four pixels oh the opacity was still 82 it was when I was messing with it so let's put the opacity back to 100 Oops, 100 same with this layer let's change it back to 100 and so now what we did is added a little bit of depth to our button and I think that looks pretty good so we're gonna take these layers and we're gonna group them together so command G to group it or you can click here but command G is a keyboard shortcut and let's name the layers so we can stay organized let's call this shadow but let's call this button shadow and then this one let's call it button and I highly recommend that you name your layers because the more and more layers you have the harder it'll start uh, getting when you start finding things and then also sometimes you you're gonna have layers that are zero opacity and if you don't if it just says layer you're like okay I'm not sure which one that is it always helps out to have a description in your layers and to name your layers so let's keep our layers named and clean that way if we ever want to give it to somebody else as well they can do that actually let's call this one button fill or background and notice um, I want you to notice that is when I re when I try to rename this group to button that it changed the name of this because in principle um, the way that you animate between different artboards is by the names of the layers and so you cannot have any layers or any artboards that have the same name or any groups or anything like that they all have to have different names and so your group name can't be the same as your layer name and so that's why we're going to rename this to button fill and we'll rename this to button so now we have our nice button and then so what we want to do now is we want it to be when we hover over the button that we will have um, an effect that we will change the, the, the color to green so let's click on our events um, icon here and anything by the way in principle anything can have an event you can have an event with artboards you can have an event with text layers but for this one we're gonna have an event on the actual button group so let's click this and let's select on hover so we're going to select hover inside so when we hover inside this we want it to have an effect so hover inside and let's click it and drag it to the same layer or the same artboard and notice now we have two of the same artboards and now we you see this um, arrow on the top what this does it shows you that this artboard is going to animate to this artboard and you'll be able to see that here in our preview window but notice right now there's nothing happening when I'm hovering over because it's the same thing so what we want to do is we want to change the color of this uh, layer here um, to a green and so uh, by the way a, a keyboard shortcut that you can do is to direct uh, to do a direct selection on something similar to sketch you just hold command and you click on the layer and it will automatically choose that instead of choosing the, like when I was here and I was clicking this it was choosing the group but when I press command it will choose the layer automatically so let's change this to a green color on hover inside green ok 
Okay, so we have the screen. Same thing we want to do with the shadow is we want to change it to move the slider to make it more of a green color. And let's preview this. So now let's restart the animation. So on preview, you see there's a hover effect, but when I hover out, nothing happens. That's because this um, event is only for hover inside the button. We also want to create a hover out. So once you hover in this button, let's choose this group again and let's click and let's add another event. And we want to choose hover outside. And we can choose to create a new artboard and drag it onto that, but we just want to go back to our original artboard. So let's do that. And then let's check out our animation on our preview panel. And a quick tip is press, uh, I want you to press W uh, to restart your animation. So if let's say you're here and you want to restart it, just press W on your keyboard and it will restart your animation. So let's try that out. Now we see a nice hover effect uh, going on. The, the cool thing about principle is once you create an, an effect between two artboards or an event, it automatically will add the keyframes for you. So it, right now there's an automatic keyframes added so it's automatically fading in and out. That's the cool thing about it compared to other pro programs where you kind of manually have to keyframe everything. This principle does that automatically which makes it so much faster. I mean sure sometimes you'd want to make your um, keyframes longer and you'd want to adjust that but just the fact that it automates, automates it for you is really cool. So now this is starting to look good. We have a, a hover effect on the button but you say what if we want to add a click effect. So when we, when we click down we want it to be depressed and that's what we're going to do. So let's, let's click on this green button and let's say we want to when we click it we'd want it to be depressed down. And the way we're going to do that is not with tap because when you tap something it will um, keep its state once you let go of the tap so what we want to do is we want to do touch down so on touch down so like when your finger or your mouse is depressed on your on the button that it will have an effect so let's click touch down and let's drag it onto the same layer as well um, and then for this touch down we want to select our button fill and the text and hold shift to select two layers at once. Uh, and then drag this down. So now let's preview that. Let's go back, press W again. So on hover, it turns green. On touchdown, it is depressed. But let's actually change this color down to a little bit of a darker green as well. A little bit better. Let's restart animation. Notice it, it's pressed down, but now we want to do the same thing as hover. We want to do on touch up. Let's click this. And let's click the events icon again. And touch up, we want it to go back to our hover state. And let's see how that looks. Okay, now we can actually click on this and it works. So now you hover over the button, you have a hover state, you have an active state, and yeah, that looks really good. And you've created your first animation in principle. You have an animated button that you can hover over, you can click on. This is actually really helpful if you're creating um, buttons in your files, um, and then you want to show a developer, you know, this is how I want it to look like. Um, you know, I wanted the button to turn green like this. You can sure you can have three different states But I think it looks better when you can actually see how it looks and so now let's let's say we want to create a recording for this and show it to Our developer or someone else, you know that wants to see how the buttons are gonna look so what you want to do is you want to click this um, Record button and you see there's different uh, things here. You can either do a cursor hidden so when you are Hovering over this and stuff, your cursor will be hidden. You can do a touch cursor, but for this point, because this looks like a web button, let's do an arrow, curs arrow cursor. So now we have our arrow cursor. And then on hover, click a couple times, and then we'll stop the animation. And let's save that movie to our desktop, so button, animation. And let's check out how that looks. Let's minimize this window, close this. Let's open this up. 
Man, that looks, that looks really good. So that was a quick overview of the principal interface and then also um, just showing you how to create a quick animation um, with buttons. And so that was, you know, a pretty simple tutorial. We're going to dive more in depth and start to create more prototypes that are more complex. And let's just show you a few of these that I've created already in the past. Let's see here. We have a, win a website that I, I animated. So let's check that out. This is an animation of a landing page that I created just for fun. Notice that it's you know has a parallax effect there. A lot of things happening here, and we're gonna start creating some of these in the future. Let's check out a few other prototypes that I've created. Let's do the um, travel icon or travel app. So this was one I did just yesterday. Um, and then this is probably a tutorial that I'd want to really show you guys how to do. Um, I know a lot of you are using Principle for mobile, and so we will create some of these in the future but yeah if you like this video please subscribe and like it and then also um, let me know in the comments if there's certain tutorials that you'd want me to work on and that you'd want to see and I'll be happy to create that for you alright guys